crush it on LinkedIn. You're in the right place if you're here to crush it on LinkedIn. And just so I could best customize tonight's training for you, go ahead and tell me in the chat box what kind of business you're in, whether you do information products, whether you do internet marketing, affiliate marketing, product launches. Obviously, those are some of the main things that are happening on JBZoo, but I just want to make sure I'm covering examples tonight that are pertinent to everyone. And uh, so go ahead and share that in the chat box. This will also just let me know that you're hearing me loud and clear here. I'm seeing uh, all kinds of different types of marketing, marketing solutions, marketing for events, marketing for software, uh, some MLM, some real estate, everything I've seen here we're going to have some uh, some great things for social media marketing, book, real estate, information products, uh, consulting, okay, fantastic. Uh, so you are definitely in the right place here and without further ado, um, let's go ahead and dive in. So I want to start a little unconventionally tonight by talking about sharks. Now, I live here in the Tampa area, and my daughter and I love to go to Clearwater Beach. But when we go to the beach, she doesn't go in the water. You know why? Because recently she saw this show called Shark Weeks. Now, if you've seen Shark Week, go ahead and put Shark Week into the chat box so that I know you know what I'm talking about. I've never actually even seen it, but I've heard of it. So if you've heard of it and you know what I'm talking about, I'm seeing quite a few people putting exclamation points here. They must be Shark Week is awesome. Man, if you've never seen Shark Week, you've got to watch Shark Week. Uh, so, so my daughter's scared to go in the water because of the sharks. And we've all seen her Shark Week, and we all know we're supposed to be scared of sharks, right? But here's what I find really interesting. In reality, more people are killed every year by hippos than by sharks. Yet, we're all scared to death of sharks, and nobody really seems to worry too much about hippos. I found this one even more interesting, that more people every year are killed by cows than sharks. And here's the real kicker. More people are killed every year by snails than sharks. Way more. And here's my source. This is right from a major news media. As you can see here, ABC News. The story, if you read the last sentence here, it says over 200,000 deaths per year take place from snails. Now, why is it that we are all scared to death of sharks, but nobody worries about snails when they go to the beach or when they go out? Now, let me give you another example. And you'll see I'm not just doing these for fun. There's a point to where I'm going with this. Remember the documentary Super Size Me? If you've seen this uh, documentary or you've heard about it, go ahead and put the words Super Size Me into the chat box. So Super Size Me is the documentary where this guy ate McDonald's every day, three times a day for a month, right? And if you remember, all kinds of bad things started to happen to him. I remember his doctor basically begging him, you've got to stop eating the McDonald's. Well, since then, no one's ever been able to replicate those results. In fact, there's been a lot of people that have gone on these so-called McDonald's diets and have actually lost weight. Again, here's proof of that right from the major media, a story about a guy who ate McDonald's three times a day and lost a ton of weight. So, why is it that we've all know about supersize me and we all kind of agree that McDonald's is bad for us when that's not always the case? And why is it that we're all scared of sharks and not snails? Well, the reason why is that the media tells us to be. Media creates reality. And the question for you tonight is how can you create a perception that will lead to people wanting to buy from you? I'm going to give, share with you the answer of this tonight. You know, you can leverage media together with a LinkedIn to create an authority image that's going to lead to lots of people buying from you. So whether you're in information products or services or consulting or real estate or all the things I saw listed, listed here, CPA marketing, affiliate marketing, network marketing, no matter what type of marketing you're in, 
you're going to benefit from what I'm going to show you how to do today by combining Media Authority with LinkedIn. Just to give you an idea of the results I've gotten with this, take a look at the email list that I built from LinkedIn using this Media Authority. Here's a screenshot from my autoresponder. Over 160,000 subscribers. Think if you got just a fraction of this list in your niche with the same strategies I'm going to share with you tonight, what that would mean for your business. LinkedIn itself has generated over a million dollars in revenue for me for over four straight years now. Here's proof of that with a screenshot from my card. And along the way, I've been featured in all of the major media, which has led to a big part of my success. Real magazine stories in Fast Company Magazine dubbed me as the nation's top search optimization. I've been in all of the major television networks and had a major book deal that came to me right from LinkedIn. I'm going to show you how this deal landed in my lap and how you can, can have a similar deal coming to you. Now, an important note is that I'm not somebody who's considered an internet marketing guru, and that's why you maybe have never heard of me in the JVZoo world. Very little of my income comes from selling internet marketing stuff to other internet marketers. My income comes from doing this stuff on LinkedIn that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. And that's why I'm here. That's why EVR has asked me to be here, to open my doors and show you how I run my business on LinkedIn. And it's not just EVR who's asked me to do this. All of the top internet marketers have. This is Frank Kern and I brainstorming on his strategy for LinkedIn. As you can see from this screenshot here from Facebook chat, one introduction that I made to Russell Brunson led to a quarter million dollars in revenue. I'm going to share with you tonight who that person is, and I'll be happy to make that same introduction to you on LinkedIn. Think about how much that will mean to your business. Uh, Tony Robbins pinned me down to do a LinkedIn training for his business mastery event. This is an event that others paid $5,000 to attend. And I want to be sharing with you not just what I did at that event, but a lot more here tonight because EBR and I are tight like that. Now, more importantly than what I've done, tonight's webinar is about you because I've helped tons of clients make their first money online using LinkedIn. So if you're looking to grow your business or make your first dollar online, you're in the right place here today. Do we have a lot of Tony Robbins fans here, by the way? I mentioned Tony Robbins. I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. And if you're a Tony Robbins fan, go ahead and put Tony into the chat box for me. One of Tony's core concepts is that you've got to erase your limiting beliefs to open up your mind for massive success. And I'm glad to see we've got so many Tony Robbins fans. A ton fans of here. Tony Robbins fans, it looks like. Yeah, fantastic. So we're going to erase some limiting beliefs to help you get the most out of today's training. And by the way, I've built tonight's training to be very engaging. Uh, and that's not for me. That's for you because it's absolutely proven that the more you engage in any training, the more you're going to get out of it. And the only way you can really engage in a webinar is through the chat box. So when I ask you to put yes into the chat box, that's not for my benefit. That's for your benefit. That's activating your subconscious to engagement so that you're going to retain more of what you're learning here tonight because we're about to pick up the pace and dive deep into some really valuable content that's going to make a huge difference in your in your business. So let's first clear our minds of any limiting beliefs by addressing these simple assumptions. First of all, would you be willing tonight to maintain an open mind if you've never considered using LinkedIn in the past? Give me a yes to this if we can all agree to this. Or perhaps you're someone who's already using LinkedIn and you're bringing in some preconceived notions about what LinkedIn is about, could you put those on hold just for tonight if it meant a different approach that could get you even better results? Give me a yes in the chat box. Don't be afraid to give me a no or a maybe. The point is for you to engage here so that you've got your subconscious ready to learn. Next, it's our second and final limiting belief that I want you to uh, ponder. If you don't currently offer services, perhaps you're all information products or uh, all physical products, but if you do not currently offer services, would you consider offering a service if it was completely turnkey, you could learn it in an afternoon like tonight, and it could make you $800 per sale with just minutes of fulfillment? 
Give me a heck yes in the chat box or an of course like Samantha just did or a hell yes as Brian just did if this is an absolute no-brainer to you. Again, don't be afraid to give me a maybe or I'm not sure or no. I'm not going to embarrass anyone or call anyone out. The point is, would you be open to this service if it took just minutes of your time and you could make $800 every time from this? Glad to see so many yeses pouring in here. And EVR, even EVR with JVZoo is giving us a hell yes here. Okay, that's what we're building towards tonight. And so let's go ahead and dive into success on LinkedIn. There is a three-step formula for success on LinkedIn that we are going to go deep in detail with very simple yet actionable items for you to master here tonight. We're going to start with conversion on LinkedIn. Now, what I mean by conversion is let's say that currently one out of every hundred people who look at your LinkedIn profile choose to do business with you in your existing business right now. That would mean you currently have a 1% conversion rate on LinkedIn. What if we turn that instead into one out of 10 people that look at your LinkedIn over the course of this year choosing to do business with you? What if you now had a 10% conversion rate on LinkedIn? What would that mean for your current business? Give me a dollar number in the chat box here. And realize we're not talking about a 10% increase in your business. We're talking about a tenfold increase in your business from LinkedIn. I'm seeing some big numbers coming in here. Scott put in a million dollars. Wiva put in billions. Um, I'm seeing some real big numbers coming in from a lot of you here. And so with these conversion strategies, that's the type of gains and return that you're going to be able to get from LinkedIn. And the beauty of these conversion strategies is that it's a lot easier to make money out of the exposure you're already getting than it is to have to go out and get more exposure. And you do this stuff once and it pays off forever. Now this is important whether you're on LinkedIn and going to market on LinkedIn or not. Because when people Google you, your LinkedIn is one of the first things that comes up. And that's where they're going to look at to decide if they should do business with you. So where do we start? Here are the three most important parts of your profile when someone first comes to see you on LinkedIn. And that could be from Google or that could be from LinkedIn if they're, they're now looking at your LinkedIn. It's your picture, your headline, and your current positions. Your picture on LinkedIn is what instantly captures the attention of the reader. The picture is what captures their eye. Now there's a lot of so-called LinkedIn experts out there that completely overlook the power of the picture. And it's a big mistake. I'm sure you've all seen on Facebook that uh, posts that share pictures or videos gets way more interactive, way more likes than just text. It's absolutely proven. We're in soundbite media and a picture is worth a thousand words. And on LinkedIn you only have one picture. And since LinkedIn is a business platform, you want it to create instant authority for you. Your picture is what draws them in and gets them to read your headline and the rest of your profile. Here's an example of this. This is the search that Jack Canfield's team ran when they were looking for someone to do the book deal with him. Jack Canfield and I teamed up on a book called Dare to Succeed that went on to become a bestseller. Jack's the uh, author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, and he's also one of the co-authors of The Secret. So it was a big deal for him to find me on LinkedIn. And they told me, I asked them, how did you guys find me? They said, well, we ran a search for LinkedIn author, and these are the results that come up when you run that search. Now, why do you think they chose me? Tell me in the chat box if you can clearly see why they chose me over the other LinkedIn authors that are out there. I'm not at the very top of the search results. I'm there on page one. You have the most amount of hair. <laughs> it's not just my hairline, EBR. I knew somebody would <laughs> would would pick up on that. Um, and I'm not the only author that's there. And it's those of you that are, and it's not about me having 500 connections because all these people that are in uh, on page one, a lot of them had 500 connections. The one thing that I have that they don't have that drew them into my profile is those media logos right there in my profile picture. 
it's it's a visual imagery that makes me stand out in the LinkedIn search results. It's the only thing that I have that they didn't have, which makes it the absolute proof that this is why they chose me. And that's why and when I ask them, this is why they chose me. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that my stuff is that much better than these other LinkedIn experts, but perception is reality. And that's why we started with this discussion of the sharks and this discussion of the supersize me on McDonald's because those are examples of how the media is creating the reality based on the perception that we see. Now, EBR and I have had a lot of discussions about this because it's it's something that you know that he's had opinions on for a long time, and it wasn't until I really showed him how this is working, especially on LinkedIn, that he really came to see this. Absolutely. So tell me, when you see this in a profile picture, especially on LinkedIn, what does this demonstrate to you? What does it demonstrate to you? Tell me in the chat box. Marilyn says that I'm credible. Steve says that I have authority. I'm seeing authority and credibility a lot there for you. I'm seeing social proof uh, that I've had some success, that I'm an expert, that I have expertise, that I'm trusted, that I'm popular, that I'm sellable, that I'm professional, that I'm the expert. And you're all exactly right. All of that is being portrayed in a simple glance. Realize the power of this. This is before they've read anything in my LinkedIn profile and before they've even chosen to look at my LinkedIn profile over my competition. It's all happening in a simple glance with my picture there. And so the mindset that they're going to have when they come in to read my LinkedIn profile is going to be completely different than someone else's. At a very simple glance, I now stand out from the rest of the results, and people are now going to be more willing to listen to me because I'm seen as an influencer and a recognized expert. I communicate a level of status and trust, and realize this, that by having this presence in your LinkedIn profile picture, you dramatically improve your chances at getting a client or customer, both on LinkedIn and off LinkedIn. Because remember, LinkedIn is an important part of your reputation management strategy. Now, the most recognizable media for you to be on are these four major television networks. These are the ones that have been around the longest. These are the ones that there used to be all there was. So they are the most recognized media networks anywhere in the world. If you're on any one of these media networks, you're now achieving the highest level of authority and credibility that you can have. But when you get into all four of these media networks, a phenomena starts to happen. It's called agreement. Agreement. Once you've been on all four of these networks, there's now agreement that you must be the best at what you do. Because a lot of these networks, some of these are diametrically opposed. But if Greg is the guy that Fox is talking to about LinkedIn and Greg is the guy that NBC is talking to about LinkedIn and ABC and CBS, there is now agreement that I'm the best at LinkedIn. This is how you are going to eliminate your competition in your business, by having agreement that you are the best at what you do. The reality is created by the perception of who you are in the media. Now, no matter where in the world you're located, these are the four most still most recognized media outlets in the world. I, I see in the chat box here from Bruce, how does this apply in Australia? I see we've got some people here from Canada and the UK. Where else? If you're joining us from another country here, let me know. And let me just address this for you. So often I'll get people in the UK, for example, that'll say, well, we would want to be in the BBC. Roger just asked that. And yes, in terms of advertising and exposure, you're right. You want to be on the channels that have your uh, that that your market is watching. But in terms of creating authority, let me ask you this: If I'm looking at the LinkedIn search results, and there's Roger there who's been on the BBC, and there's a competitor of his there in the UK that's been on the four major U.S. networks, who's going to look like they have more authority? You know how hard it is for someone in another country to get onto all of the US major television networks, they must be really, really good. And let me tell you this, Greg, let me just interrupt and just uh, kind of um, 
fortify what you just said. How many times have you watched the news here in the United States and see somebody from Australia as one of the talking head guests or, uh, or Great Britain or Ireland or, or wherever? It's not just U U.S. people that are on the U.S. broadcasting networks. There's people from all over the world. Yeah, and, it, and it's giving you um, your, the perception you're creating in terms of your authority is even higher than someone that's been on just your BBC channel. You know, it's, it's fairly easy for someone in the UK to get onto the UK news, but for you to get into the US news, that's really hard to do. It's really an accomplishment. So in terms of creating authority, this is going to create the perception that you are the best of the best of what you do globally. And getting into the major media is something that anyone could do no matter who you are. I'm going to share with you some strategies tonight about how to do this using LinkedIn. And it's so don't let your own limiting beliefs of, you know, why would the media even want someone like me? Why why you know, I'm just starting out in my business or I'm a, you know, a, you know, I'm an affiliate. I don't even have any products or expertise. Don't let those limiting beliefs hold you back as I'm going to show you tonight perceptions or the reality is created by the perception of the media. Now, how much would it be worth to any business owner to create this type of reality? If, think about if you had a client and that client was already doing lots of business on the internet and now they were able to elevate their status by leveraging the trust and credibility that comes from the media. How much would that be worth? Give me a dollar number in the chat box here. How much would a business that's doing a million dollars, for example, in gross revenue already, how much would they gain by having this type of authority? Cindy says it would be priceless. Nikki says lots. Priceless, says Colby. And, and realize the reason they're saying priceless is because it's a lifetime of benefits from this. Once you do it, as with any conversion strategies, it pays off forever and forever. So in the next year, you might see your business increase double from having this type of authority. But it's every year thereafter it pays off. That's what makes this so valuable, to have this type of authority for your business. Just to give you some case studies on this, Terry Wilkerson, a client and friend of mine, who is a speaker and marketer just like you, uh, added these logos to her profile picture and added over 300 registrations to her email list and, and, re and webinar uh, in the first 30 days just by making this change. Here's another example of a great profile. Vivica Von Rosen will take a look at uh, her case study in more depth because she's very similar to a lot of you, uh, an affiliate marketer and a online marketer and as you can see she's got the media logos of where she's been here so the logos in your photo is what draws the eye into your LinkedIn profile it's what gets them to come read your profile the picture is what gets them to choose you now once you've got them looking at your LinkedIn profile now we want to have our profile perform like a sales letter would perform for us and so your profile summary is the second most important part of your LinkedIn profile. Now, let's suppose you had a meeting with a client and you went in to sit down with this customer and you started saying things like, well, I have eight years experience in marketing and our product is the best of the best and I'm an out-of-the-box thinker and a team leader or a team player and by the way, I have an MBA. How would that sales meeting go if that's how you were talking? It would go awful. How does any good sales call go? Any good sales copy go? Tell me in the chat box. I know we have some of you that have done a lot of selling. And so what I'm going to open your mind to right now, in fact, show you how to create in your LinkedIn profile, is to write your summary in a way that works just like a sales letter where it builds rapport in a relationship. Those are some of the things you're sharing in the chat box. Exactly. It's more about them and their benefit, Dave. Really well put. Tells them how they're going to benefit, as Deanna says. Exactly. So before I show you what to do on LinkedIn, I want to show you what to never do on LinkedIn. LinkedIn themselves has reported that these are the most overused buzzwords on LinkedIn. 
when you use any one of these 10 buzzwords in your LinkedIn profile summary, at a subconscious level, it triggers distrust. They feel like you are just talking fluff to them. So you want to avoid using these words. Now, I realize we're going pretty quickly through this, but if you've been engaging, you're going to, those words are just going to sink right into your subconscious. That's why it's really important that you continue to engage throughout the training here. Here is the formula that we're going to break down in depth for you to turn your LinkedIn profile summary into a selling machine. I'm going to break down this formula for you right now. We'll go through some case studies based on what a lot of you told me you're doing. So the formula, it's a three-sentence formula. It works for any and every niche and business type that I've ever worked with and that I've seen here tonight. The formula starts with a question. It's you know how, and then you're going to plug in your target audience, and then you're going to plug in the problem that you're solving for your target audience. If you're in business, if you sell anything, it's because people are buying it because it solves a problem for them. <coughs> Let's take an example of this. I think it'll be easier to flesh this out to an example. So this would be your LinkedIn profile summary if you did offline local marketing. These are people that use the internet to provide leads for local businesses. The formula starts with you know how. That part's going to be the same for all of us. Then you're going to plug in your target audience. In this case, it's small businesses in Tampa. Then you're plugging in the problem you solve. So in this case, it's to find ways to get new customers from the internet. Sentence two is the same for all of us. I solved this. And then in sentence three, you tell them how you solve it in a unique way. So just picture if I'm a small business owner in Tampa and I read this, I read this open sentence. You know how small businesses in Tampa struggle to find ways to get new customers from the internet? My head is nodding, yeah, that's exactly the problem I have. That's why I'm on LinkedIn looking for someone to help me in the first place. This is finally somebody who understands my world and is speaking my language. That's how you build rapport with someone. And you do it in the form of a question, just like any good sales call, you would ask questions. So let me break down the psychology behind why this works so you understand why and how it works. And then you're going to be able to adapt this formula to your business, no matter what it is you're selling, to turn your LinkedIn profile into a selling machine for you. So the reason this works so powerfully, this three sentence formula, this I call it the I solve this formula, is it's based on a very advanced copywriting technique where you enter the reader's head and get into a conversation with that reader that flows naturally. There's just a natural flow to the way this formula works. And it basically gets them to ask how do you do it, which is giving them permission for you to tell them what you do. If we go back to this formula again, here it is. It flows naturally in the reader's head. After they read the opening sentence and they say, yeah, I want that in sentence two. When you say, I solved this, it's going to make them curious. They're going to say, really? In their head, they're going to say, really? How do you solve this? And then in sentence three, you tell them how you solve it. Now, as Deanna is pointing out in the chat box, this is not just limited to your LinkedIn. I use this in all of my marketing, and I would recommend you do too as well. It works in everywhere. It works in your fan page and your Facebook ads. When I meet people at a link at a at a marketing conference, when at the next JVZoo event coming up, when people ask me, Greg, what do you do? I don't tell them I'm a LinkedIn author and speaker. That does not open up any business potential with them. Instead, I say to them, Well, you know how people are always looking for ways to uh, get more leads from the internet. I solved this. And literally, when you do it in person, I can literally see their head nodding, chopping at the bit for me to pitch them. Really? You know, they're thinking, really, in their heads? How do you do that? That's why I'm at this JVZoo conference in the first place. I want to learn how to do that. You can solve that? Tell me how you do it. That's what they're thinking in their head. And that's them giving you permission. It's so important you get that permission to then tell them, which means pitch them on what you do. I do it by helping businesses create authority you know, on LinkedIn. So let's go through some more examples of this and break this down. There's one more part to this that makes this so powerfully on LinkedIn. When you get into that sentence three about how you do it, 
you've got to have be believable. And when you combine what I'm sharing with you right now with having those media logos, with having that authority, it allows you to make big claims. You can back it up. You've got the proof. You've been in the media. They're already coming to your profile, seeing you as the authority. Now when you say, I solved this problem, they're going to believe you. Without that authority hand in hand with this selling formula I'm giving you, you're, they're, they're going to doubt your big, your big claims. So this all ties together and builds on each other what I'm sharing with you here. But when you say I solved this and you can prove it because you've been in the media solving it, now they're going to believe you and be ready to buy from you. So here's that formula one more time. At this point, write down the formula as you see it on the screen word for word. Don't worry about getting it perfect for your business. If you continue to engage with me and stay till the end of this training, I promise you it's going to pop right into your head through your subconscious exactly the perfect phrasing of this for you and your business. Just have the formula down so far because my formula is making this easy fill in the blank for you to do something that's very advanced. That's my style of teaching is to take things that are very advanced and make them simple for you. Now, taking this even deeper, I promised you this was going to be a deep dive, but I'm going to make it real simple for you to go deep. I want you to notice the words that are in red that I've highlighted in red now. This is that same example we were looking at. Look at the words in red, struggle and fun. These are emotional words. People buy based on emotions, and you want to tap into emotions and trigger emotions with the words you use in your marketing. I'm sure you've heard this before. Well, the way to do that on your LinkedIn is to remind them of the emotional pain they're feeling. So you see how I'm saying you notice how small businesses in Tampa struggle to find ways to get new customers from the Internet. I'm reminding them of the feelings they're having about the problem that I solve. So here's a list of some simple emotional words for you to insert into your copy in LinkedIn. You want these ones work best on LinkedIn. You want to have a negative word such as frustration or fear and a positive word. Notice I said my solution is going to be fun. It's going to be easy to use. When you show them that they're feeling pain in the negative words and that they're going to have pleasure and fun in your solution, you're now getting them into an emotional state where they're ready to buy. Here's another example. You know how it's hard to get into national publications like NBC and ABC so you can become a recognized media authority? Well, I solved this. Now, some of you were even asking me this question earlier when we were talking about the importance of using those media logos in your LinkedIn profile. You were saying, well, Greg, how do I get into the major media? So you should really be connecting with this question that I'm asking you here. You should, you should be, you, you're, the dialogue in your head is, really, we, I want that solved. I want to know how to get into the major media. How do you do that, Greg? Are you going to show us how to do that in today's webinar? And the answer is, yes, I am going to show you how to do it in today's webinar. So you see how this formula gets the reader chomping at the bit for your solution. Here's the formula one last time. Make sure you've got the formula down at this point. And now picture how this starts to tie together. I'm going to give you the final piece to turning your LinkedIn into a selling machine. So here's how it ties together, what I've shown you so far. In step one, we talked about the search results the viewer is looking at. You're going to draw them into your profile by having media logos in your profile picture. They never even read the rest of your profile if they don't choose you. And they don't choose you if your picture doesn't capture their eye. So then they click through, and on your profile, they read this pre-sell statement. Can you see this? Give me a yes in the chat box. Engage your subconscious and give me a yes if you can see how this would get your buyers, your customers, ready to buy from you. It would put them into a state where they're reminded of the emotions and, they, and the problems you solve for them, and this would work hook, line, and sinker ready to buy from you. Seeing lots of yeses pouring into the question. So now, what is the final step in selling through the Internet when you've got someone ready to buy? What is it? You put a call to action in there. Now, you know this. I know you know this. I've seen your Facebook ads. I've seen your videos. I've seen your copy on JVZoo where you write great calls to action. 
you know you need to ask for the sale after you get them all excited but you're not doing this on your LinkedIn for some reason we all have brain farts and don't think about putting a call to action in our social media profile here are the three best calls to action that I've tested out of hundreds I've tested that are proven to work on LinkedIn you want to be using all three of these if you you want to get your phone ringing if you hate making cold calls but would love it if people just called you wanting to buy your stuff use that first one if you want to build your list or drive traffic to your webinars or to your JVZoo sales pages use that second one that's my bread and butter one right there the third one is an important one for you to always include as well because you want to get people connecting with you on LinkedIn you Link, when you're building your LinkedIn network, it's like building your list. It's something you can go back to over and over again to get people to buy from you over and over again. So all three of these calls to action you need to use on LinkedIn. This works in any and every niche, no matter what you're selling, no matter what your price point is. Just to prove it to you, look at this case study from Randall Malden here. Randall used what I've just shared with you to sell training programs on LinkedIn. His programs are 7 to 10K each and people buy them right from his LinkedIn profile without him needing to interact with them at all. Traffic comes to his LinkedIn profile, they're brought in by his authority in his picture, they read his I solved this statement which puts them in an emotional state ready to buy and they land on his call to action and give him $10,000. So if you're thinking, well I don't know if this would work for me, don't let that limiting belief hold you back. Now, the elephant in the room at this point would be this. Well, Greg, this is all well and good with what you've showed me so far. One problem, though. How am I going to get anyone to see my LinkedIn profile? Now, if you were having this thought or are now having this thought, go ahead and give me a yes in the chat box because it's fair game. And... I'm a straight shooter with you guys as you're starting to see here tonight so I'm going to address the elephant in the room because really you could have the most beautiful LinkedIn profile in the world that's turned into a selling machine like I've just shown you with a call to action but if nobody ever sees it isn't the, the equivalent of, of being a beautiful billboard out in the middle of nowhere how is that going to lead to any value well I solved this for you and we're going to solve this in the next part of our, our webinar right now. And I put this in this formula here for you as just another example to show you how this, this works so well. Lead with the problem you're going to solve in the form of a question and tell your audience that you solve it and you'll have them chomping at the bit wanting your solution. This is what you want your customers to be feeling about you. This is how you're going to crush it on LinkedIn and on JVZoo. So how are we going to get people looking at our LinkedIn profile? Let's start with what converts best and fastest to cash. This is how you're going to make money today on LinkedIn. You want to follow up with the people who have already viewed your profile. LinkedIn is the only place in the world that allows you to see who's viewed your profile. Imagine if your Facebook page allowed you to see everyone that came to it or if your squeeze page or sales page on JVZoo allowed you to see every single person who even came to it that, that would be amazingly phenomenal like if we could see information and be able to follow up with the people that don't opt in on our squeeze pages that would be mind-blowing you can't do that anywhere but on LinkedIn. You can see who's viewed your profile. Now, if someone's looking at your LinkedIn profile, that's the most qualified lead you could ever have in the world. It's an absolute no-brainer to follow up with these people. Now, if you're already aware of this or already doing this or planning to do this, give me a yes in the chat box. If this is new information for you, give me the words new in the chat box and I'll spend a few more minutes on how to do this but I don't want to spend time showing you something if it's something that you already know about and I'm seeing almost all yeses coming in here well here comes some of the news that are coming here so this is how this works from your LinkedIn homepage you're gonna have these numbers on the left hand side here you see there where it says 73 people viewed my profile you click on that this screen on the right pops up 
These are all those people. These are the people that viewed my profile. And you could cl click on them and learn a little bit about them by reading their profile and then message them. The ones that have no picture have opted out of this. But you're going to get a lot of really good leads from these people. Now, there was a question, do I need the paid account to do this or can I do this with the free account? So with the free account, you can see the last five people who have viewed you on LinkedIn. With the strategies I'm about to share with you, you're going to want to upgrade to the paid account. The paid account starts at $30 per month, and it allows you to view everyone who's viewed you for the last 90 days. So you're going to want access to those leads for that premium account. You do not, it's not a must-have to have a premium account because you can see the last five people without that. And for some of you, you're, that maybe that's all you're getting right now is five views a week. So you'll be fine with the free account for now. Once you get a flood of traffic, it's worth 30 bucks to be able to follow up with those people, right? Of course it is. Now, LinkedIn themselves is really, really pushing this strategy, follow up with who's viewed you. And I know we have some really smart people here today, so I'd like you to tell me in the chat box if you think you know why is LinkedIn really pushing this strategy. Tell me why would LinkedIn be pushing you and ed educating you is what I mean by pushing this out to follow up with who's viewed you. Every LinkedIn expert out there is teaching this. And about 65 to 70 percent of you told me you already know about this. So we've kind of proven the point that most business owners already know about this to follow up with who's viewed you. And a lot of you are getting it right in the chat box. You're exactly right. LinkedIn wants you to buy the paid account, right? If they can get a million of us more through me educating you and everyone educating you to, to upgrade to the paid account, now they're making $30 a month from you they weren't making before. They scale that into the millions, they're making millions. So it's it's win-win that LinkedIn is doing this. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that LinkedIn is pushing this. It's win-win because we want those leads and we want to have success with LinkedIn and they want the revenue from LinkedIn. Now, I saw this trend coming and what I share with you next, the secret strategy that I use to build my targeted email list to 160,000 subscribers that's what I'm about to give you next. You're, you're, you're going to almost laugh literally out loud when you see how simple this is. So I saw this trend coming that LinkedIn was, lev was uh, pushing out and educating everyone to follow up with who's viewed you. Every small business owner on LinkedIn is going to be doing this this year. 70% of you on this call even told me you're already doing this. You're already following up with who's viewed you. So here is the simple strategy I've been using for the last year and a half to build an email list of 160,000 targeted subscribers on LinkedIn. What you do is you run a very simple search to find your target audience on LinkedIn. I can show you how to do that during the Q&A if you need help with basic stuff like searching on LinkedIn. This isn't a basic training on LinkedIn. Uh, this is how to make money and how to crush it on LinkedIn. So you find your target audience. You go view their profile. Now, why are we going to go, what's going to happen when we go view our target audience's profile? What, what are they being taught to do? What are they already doing that we just established? Exactly, Stacy. They are going to come back and view us because they are going to think that we are a lead for them. It's so simple. If you want to generate views on demand of your LinkedIn profile, you go view your target audience. Especially when your target audience is marketers or small business owners. Those are the people that are doing this the most because they need those leads. They're going to come back and view you. Now this works especially well when you've got those media logos in your profile picture. Because now it creates this curiosity. Hey, who's this guy, Greg, that's been on all these... TV networks, it's looking at me. So they're going to come back. We realize how this all ties together now, the congruence of this. Linda's saying this makes so much sense, so she's getting it. Let this sink in the congruency of this. So you're going to go view your target audience. Their curiosity is going to be piqued because they see your media logos. They're going to come back and read your profile. And now you will have written your profile specifically talking to that target audience that, hey, I can solve this problem for you. And you're going to use the emotional word list I give you to put them in a state where they're ready to buy. 
and they're going to land on your call to action and hand you money right from your LinkedIn without you ever needing to interact with them. That's how this all ties together. That's how you generate traffic on demand on LinkedIn and convert it into traffic. Now, I find for every 100 profiles you view, on average, seven will view you back. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but seven highly targeted leads, seven sales for a couple hours of work to view 100 profiles is a really good return on investment of your time. Now, my question is, is this what you think I do all day, is sit around and view LinkedIn profiles? Is that how you think I built an email list of 160,000 subscribers? Or has there got to be a better way to do this? Okay, a lot of you are putting it in the chat box there. Well, consider this. In addition to what I've just shown you, LinkedIn is a search engine. And if you know how to rank at the top of the search engine, you can gain additional exposure that's inbound without you needing to do anything on LinkedIn. The beauty of all the strategies I'm sharing with you tonight is this is stuff you set up once and run it and the money comes in. I'm not teaching you how to be on LinkedIn every day and to go into groups and network with people or spam people. You can do all that stuff if you really want to live in LinkedIn. But if you just want to learn how to crush it on LinkedIn and set it up once and then have the payoff come to you, that's what I'm sharing with you here today. So the most common searches on LinkedIn are for SEO, social media, speaker, author, consultant, and web designer. So if you do any of those things or if you have products that do or serve any of those people, you, there is a lot of search traffic for you to capture on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn search optimization, basically SEO inside of LinkedIn, is my real claim to fame. My company has done SEO optimization for over 7,000 clients on LinkedIn, where we get you to the top of the search results. And that's why Fast Company Magazine featured me talking about me as the nation's top expert. And I'm going to share with you exactly how to do this. Let me give you just one more case study. This is my client and friend we looked at earlier, Vivica Von Rosen. I got her to the top of the search results for the phrase social media speaker, and she landed a $10,000 keynote speaking gig in the corporate world. The corporate world loves LinkedIn and will pick, handpicks their speakers for conferences from LinkedIn. So if you'd like to speak at conferences and get paid to do it, you want, just need to be at the top of the search results on LinkedIn. Here's how you do it. The reason I'm considered the world's best at this is I've broken it down and simplified it for you. There are five places in your profile that you need to put your keywords. Your keywords are the words you want to show up in the search results for on LinkedIn. These are the five places that you need to put your keywords. When you put your keywords in all five of these places, LinkedIn gives you the maximum weighted score for that keyword phrase and you shoot to the top of the search results. You don't have to do anything else that goes with Google SEO. You just need to put your words in these five places. If you've been engaging with me in the chat box, those will sink right into your subconscious and you'll know exactly what to do. Now, there is one really important second component to showing up in the LinkedIn search results. And that's because LinkedIn is built on the concept of three degrees of separation. This means your network extends three levels deep. If you understand how having a deeper network is critical to your success on LinkedIn, give me a yes in the chat box. If this is completely clear to you, we're already at the top of the hour here because we had some technical difficulty, so I don't want to spend time on something you guys already know. If you're not completely clear on this, give me a question mark in the chat box. I'm seeing mostly all yeses coming in here. Fantastic. Well, here comes a few question marks. So let's just spend an extra minute on this so we don't leave anyone behind, even if it puts us a little over our time tonight. So your network extends three degrees, right? So if this is you, just in this before and after case study here, if this is you, if you have about 77 friends on LinkedIn, their friends would add up to this 8,000, 
and their friends would add up to this quarter million. That means your network has those three, has, the, has all three of those numbers added together. That's a quarter million people. That might sound like a lot, right? Well, the challenge is LinkedIn in the U.S. alone has 259 million members. And worldwide, there was over 400 million members. So think about this. If your network has a quarter million people, maybe your network's even bigger. Maybe you have, say, two or three million people in your network. That actually is, means 99% of the people on LinkedIn cannot find you because you're not a part of their network. Listen to this important point, those of you that put the question mark. The person searching on LinkedIn does not get to search the whole database. It does not work like Google. They only get to search through their network and three levels deep of their network. So if you're not connected to them on one of those three levels, you are left out of the search results. That should help to clarify that. And the question that you would want to be asking right now is, what's the fastest and easiest way I can grow my network into the multi-millions? The bigger your reach on network, of, the, of your network on LinkedIn, the more opportunities are going to come to you. And if you've never had a, an opportunity land in your lap, if you've never had a customer or a client just find you on LinkedIn and contact you to do business with you, it's because your network is just too limited. You're missing out on 99% of that action. You've heard about all these people that are crushing it on LinkedIn. This is the difference between them and you. They've invested in building their network. And I'm going to show you right now a shortcut to build your network. Once you've built your network, you then put your keywords in those five places I've shown you, and you're now at the top of everyone's search results on LinkedIn, and you crush it on LinkedIn. It's like being at the top of Google for your keywords. So here's the shortcut to expanding your network. There's an easy way to immediately grow your LinkedIn network so that instead of being in almost none of the searches, you're now in almost all of the searches. What you want to do is add to your network what's called super connectors. Write down that phrase, super connectors. I'm an example of a super connector, and here's what this means. You see these numbers on the screen here? When you connect with me, my first and second level connections become your third level connections. So by you adding me, which takes you all of a minute, correct? you now add almost 4 million people to the depth of your network. So a little light bulb should be going off. Before I connected with Greg, I had 2 or 3 million people in my network. I add Greg, I jump up 4 million people. If I could find a few more super connectors like Greg, each one of them bringing 3 or 4 million people to my network, I could grow to 100 million really fast. I wouldn't have to be connecting to everyone. We're not talking about just connecting to everyone from everywhere. We're talking about strategically and efficiently fast updating and growing your network by connecting to super connectors. So how do you find the super connectors? Well, LinkedIn used to allow you to sort by number of connections. You see this screenshot? This is taken from LinkedIn about two years ago. Well, LinkedIn took this away. They no longer allow you to search by number of connections. You know why they took this away? It worked too darn good. The people that were, the business owners that were connected to the super connectors were crushing it. We were all at the top of the search results, dominating, winning all of the business from LinkedIn. LinkedIn decided we can't have just a few people winning all the business here. If we really want to grow our platform, we have to make it fair and even for everyone. Now, they couldn't take away the super connectors from me that I was already connected to, but they made it impossible for you or anyone else to ever find them. They took this out of the search function. So you now have no way to find the super connectors, which made it even and leveled the playing field for everyone else. Now, as your reward for staying till the very end here today, I'm going to show you a way that you can still get access to all of the super connectors. You need these super connectors to explode your network into the multi-millions. So once you have the super connectors, who's going to find you on LinkedIn? You're going to show up in all of the searches now, 
at the top of the search results for your keywords, you're going to have potential clients and customers now coming inbound to you from LinkedIn. But it's much more than that. This is how you're going to have book deals start to come to you on LinkedIn. This is how you're going to have the conferences start to pay you, find you, and pay you to speak. And here's the real kicker. The media absolutely loves LinkedIn. There's no bigger database in the world for business experts. When the Wall Street Journal or NBC Nightly News wants to interview someone for business, they go to LinkedIn to search for that person. And once you have the super connectors, you show up at the top of those search results and you wind up getting into real TV, real print magazines, real radio, real media, real exposure. That's going to get you tons of traffic and create massive exposure for you. And it happens from having been on LinkedIn with the super connectors. Now, there's a catch-22 to getting this real media exposure from LinkedIn. And a catch-22 means kind of a, a chicken or the egg scenario, which came first. You see, here's what happens. Yes, the media is absolutely looking for business experts to get quotes from on LinkedIn. However, if they find you on LinkedIn, they're very unlikely to contact you. Why is this? Tell me in the chat box why if they found you right now on LinkedIn, they would be very unlikely to actually choose you to put on TV. They would probably choose the other guy. And why is it that the same person keeps getting in the media over and over and over again? The rich get richer. They're in the inner circle, it feels like. And we're on the outside looking in. And many of you are putting it in the chat box. And you're on the right track. You don't have any authority. You don't have any credibility. Let me paint a picture for you. The guy who's searching on LinkedIn is a production assistant or an editor assistant for magazines, production assistant for TV. His job is to find an expert and put them on TV and for things to go smooth. If he picks you and you start doing something embarrassing like inappropriately plugging your website or just speaking you know, way too much, that production assistant is getting fired. His job is on the line. You think he's going to risk his job on somebody who's never been in the major media before? When he can just go a little deeper in the search and he can find somebody who's been in the major media before, they're always going to choose that person that's already been there because then there's no risk. So that creates this chicken or the egg situation because I can't get in the media unless I've been in the media. How am I ever supposed to get in the media in the first place? That's not fair. Now, clearly, Greg, you've been in the major media. Case in point, I got on TV onto a daytime TV show here. This was broadcast into 14 different uh, media networks, media markets, over 3 million people saw this in one day, and we had floods of traffic coming to our website that kept us busy for months from this one TV interview. How did I land that? How did I get them to trust me so that I could break into the major media? Well, that's the question, and here's the answer. I used a strategy that's called a media citation. Write this down. Media citation. It's one of the most powerful business strategies anyone's ever shared with me. And it's how I broke into the inner circle so that I could create authority and get into real TV. So that I could get them to choose me and no longer see that I'm a, um, a uh, see as a risk. So a media citation is a pay to play strategy where you leverage the relationship that someone else already has in the media to get yourself quoted into the major news outlets. In this case, this client of ours was quoted onto an ABC.com webpage. Once they've been quoted on that webpage, they now can legally and ethically say that they were seen on ABC. They've been cited there. A media citation is how you pay to play and break into that inner circle. Once you're in that inner circle, your media exposure on TV and radio and magazines starts to snowball. 
Now, a media citation is different than a press release. In order for a press release to get picked up by the major media, it needs to be newsworthy. And you'd have to write it in a way where you're newsjacking, which is a complicated service that PR people get paid a lot of money to do. A media citation is where you're just being quoted. They're taking a quote from you and they're putting your contact information onto the ABC page. It's a much simpler, faster way of getting into the major media. So media citations are being used in all major walks of business. Here's some case studies from coaches, training, consultants, where they've used this media citation to get into the major media. Offline, legit offline businesses are using this as well. Chiropractic, realtors, dentistry, acupuncture, even on Amazon.com for listings and products. Now, the most well-known media that you would want to get a citation from are these recognized networks. These are the globally most recognized networks for creating authority. CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox. Now, you benefit from a media citation no matter who you are. Don't let your own limiting belief hold you back that, well, why would the media want to quote from me, little old me? This is a strategy where the reality is created by the perception. Once you're in the media, you're there. It's similar to using Google SEO to get to the top of Google. Whoever's there is the best by the facto of them being there. So no matter who you are, no matter if you think that you're worthy of this or not, that's a story that's going on in your head. This is a strategy and a tactic for creating authority. And no matter where in the world you're based, these media citations on those four major US networks are the most globally recognized. Now, once you are cited on a major media network website, then and only then can you say as seen on and use those media logos in all your social profiles. This strategy is not limited to LinkedIn. Do not use the logos if you've not actually been on a major media website. That will get you into trouble. Now, more importantly, once you're cited, you are now a quoted expert. That's something that someone that runs a press release doesn't have. You are now a quoted expert. You have something that your competition doesn't have, and you are now perceived as the one they're going to choose. Let's be clear. A media citation is a conversion strategy. It's how you're going to get more clients to choose you. It's how you're going to be more likely to get paid speaking gigs, more likely to have paid book deals, and how you're going to break into the inner circle on LinkedIn and get real media exposure. A media citation is not a traffic strategy. Yes, some people will see it and will wind up coming to your website. That's not the point of us doing this. This is not a press release strategy. A media citation is you being quoted to create authority. Once you have this, you can use these logos in your LinkedIn profile, just like I have, just like you see here, so that you stand out from the crowd in the search results. So this is how you're going to get them to click through and read. Read the rest of your LinkedIn profile. Read that summary where you're going to have those emotional words and your call to action and have them ready to buy from you. Having these authority citations is the most important thing you can do on LinkedIn. It's what triggers everything else and success on LinkedIn. If you want more proof that authority matters, take a look at this quote from Frank Kern from Stage. Frank says, positioning yourself as an authority is the single most important thing you can do to increase your perceived value to your market. And he's absolutely right. If you want to eliminate your competition, if you want to get more people to choose you and be able to raise your prices, you do that by creating authority. Now, you might be thinking, what about saturation? If I can just go buy these media logos, won't everybody eventually start to do this? And won't this become saturated and devalue? Why is this not a concern? Tell me in the chat box, because I know we have some really smart people here today. We've seen some great interaction in today's webinar. But tell me, why is this not a concern? Why is it sometimes in the internet marketing world, it looks like, well, everybody seems to have these logos? Because you've probably seen many of your friends on Facebook or LinkedIn doing this. 
And it might seem that way in our world, but realize how small our world is compared to the rest of the world. And it's not just that some people won't do it because it's expensive. Thomas says this, and you're exactly right, Thomas. I spent thousands of dollars on my media citation, well worth it for what it's done for my business, and not everyone can afford it. Not everyone will take action. Really good point from Stephanie. But the real point is there's 300 million users on LinkedIn. There's no way we could ever saturate LinkedIn. It's physically impossible that 300 million people could do this. Most of them don't even know about this. So that's why this is absolutely real and there's absolutely no dilution or devaluation in it. Now here's where this gets really, really interesting. Read with me this message that I got on LinkedIn shortly after I added the media logos to my LinkedIn profile. This is from one of my connections. Read with me on this. It says, Hi, Greg. I noticed the media logos for ABC, Fox, CBS, and NBC on your profile picture. If you don't mind, I was wondering, how can I get those for my profile picture so I can create more authority for my business? Let that sink in and see if a little light bulb goes off for you like it did for me. Tell me in the chat box what you're seeing and hearing and feeling when you read this message and see if you're like me. Because I don't know about you, but I work really hard in my business at sales and marketing. And so the thought of someone coming to me and asking for something, asking to give me money for something that I'm not even trying to sell, that was a huge light bulb for me. This guy saw that I had the media logos, figured I must have had some way that I did it. Could he hand me money to hook him up to do it? Because he knows how valuable it would be for his business, and he's seen how valuable it would be for my business. This is people literally throwing money at me without me even having to try to sell something. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a business that I need to be in. And when I got this message, I made that realization. Now, I have to tell you, at the time, my story in my head was, well, I'm not in the services business. I'm a LinkedIn speaker and trainer, and I have information products, and I don't do media authority. I'm not in that service. But I didn't let that limiting belief hold me back. The analogy I like to use is if there was a $100 bill on the ground and it didn't belong to anybody, would you bend over and pick it up? Or would you say, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pick up the money. No, the money's there to be picked up. You would pick it up. And you'd use that to finance everything else you do. You wouldn't say, well, I'm really an author, an affiliate marketer. I'm, I'm not in that business. If the business is there and there's money to be made, of course we want to make it. So being in the business of a media authority, I found to be very easy. All I did was add this very simple pre-sell statement to my LinkedIn profile. The same one I shared with you earlier. You know how it's hard to get into national publications like NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox so you can become a celebrity in, in your field of expertise. I solve this. I then tell them how I solve it and give them a call to action where they go and buy it. It's in my LinkedIn profile right now. It's there every day. And I sell this media authority package from my LinkedIn profile every day without me needing to do a thing. Now, couldn't you copy and paste this exact same pre-sell statement into your LinkedIn profile and be selling media authority packages every day exactly like I am? If you had a way to do this, of course you could. This media authority is a fun business to be in. The reason why is you're adding massive value for your clients and it pays off right away. The minute they get those media authority logos, they start to benefit. More people start to choose them. More people start to hand them money. And they're happy that you were the guy that helped them get into the media. It's really hard for a lot of people to get into the media. But here's the real kicker with this. When you help someone get into the media, you build an emotional connection with them because authority strokes their ego and helps them show off to their friends and family. 
Now, if you're selling to doctors or lawyers or dentists, they might want to be in the media for their ego, to brag to their friends. And I know that's not what you and I are like. We're humble family people. But I got to tell you something. When my daughter saw that I was on TV, it changed the way she looks at me forever. I'm still, it still breaks me up to even talk about it. Now that she's a teenager, when most teenagers are embarrassed of their parents, when her friends come over to my house, she says, this is my dad, he was on TV. That's in the sentence now forever. And she's proud to introduce me and tell her friends about that. When your child brings her friends over, or his friends, do they just say, this is my dad? Or my mom? Or what if they said, this is my dad and he was on TV? Like, they're proud of you. That That's, I will always be in debt to the guy that helped me get into the media and turn me on to media citations. Not just because of what it did for my business, but because of that connection this gave me with my daughter. And imagine being able to share that with the people you love and with your customers. Think about how your customers are going to want to give you more referrals and more business when you're the guy that helped them have that with their family and for their business. That's a fun business to be in. Well, we have covered a lot here today. We went over our time, and we're going to have even more coming up in the Q&A here, and I'm going to show you how to get access to those super connectors. You need those to crush it on LinkedIn. Well, let's just recap what I've given you here today. It's everything that EBR promised you I would give you here today. I gave you that three-word sentence that's going to turn your profile into a selling machine, and I made it fill in the blank for you. Next, I gave you the three best proven calls to action. Put those in your profile, and you'll start having people hand you money without you even needing to talk to them. Then we covered how to expand your reach by almost 20 times on LinkedIn. The main reason you don't have business and media opportunities coming to you right now is you just do not have connections enough. You're, out, you're left out of the search results. You're missing all the game and all the dollars that are happening on LinkedIn. We covered how to land keynote speaking opportunities, paid speaking opportunities. I gave you those five places to put your keywords to get to the top of the search results. If you missed that, we'll go back over that again at the very end here today. I showed you how to generate views on demand and convert those views into buyers. Remember, you just need to go view their profile and they'll come back and view your profile. And imagine if you had a way to just press a button and have thousands of people looking at your LinkedIn profile reading about these things that I've shown you how to, and trained you on how to write today. We also covered how to have people interested in giving you money to do that logo thing that you've done to your LinkedIn. So what's next? Well, choice number one is you can go at it alone based just off the information we went over on the webinar today. And choice number two is you can take a look at this limited opportunity I've put together to give you the most unfair advantages possible on LinkedIn. And this is where I'd like to introduce you to what I call linked inception. It's supposed to be kind of a funny play on the, the names of one of my favorite movies and the word LinkedIn. So what is linked inception? Is it a training course? Well, not quite. Is it a mastermind, a coaching program? Is it a done-for-you program where everything I've shown you today could just get done for you? Or is there a software that might automate all of this? The reason I say not quite to each of these things is that the linked inception program loads you up with all of these things, which is everything you need to crush it on LinkedIn in the shortest amount of time and in the biggest possible way. So let's start with the training. My training gives you exactly what to do on LinkedIn to get sales. Remember we said you need to follow up with the people that have viewed your profile? Well, I'm going to give you my exact script that will work for your business no matter what you're selling. You will adapt this to your business just like I showed you with the three-sentence formula for your summary. You've seen how my teaching style is fill in the blank and works so powerfully at deep copywriting levels but very simple. It takes 30 minutes to go through my training. I'm not somebody who bombards you with hours and hours of videos of all these things you could be doing because I know you don't have time for that. 
You want to get real results? The real value of my training is I've boiled it down to 30 more minutes of what works best. And then to ensure you get the most out of that training, I'm going to include five group coaching webinars. So if you have any questions on it, how to adapt it to your business, you show up live and interact with me five times uh, over the next five months. We'll have a monthly Q&A call. Now, it gets better. Remember how important and valuable it is to get placed into the major media? Well, I will guarantee your placement with a media citation within seven business days. I will guarantee placement for you onto all four of these major news outlets. And not just any placement, not just a press release, but a media citation which looks exactly like this. You will be featured as a top recommended professional. This is the highest level of status you can have, and it's how you're going to get your quote showing up on these major media news outlets. I did this. It's how I got into the big four, and then I started using those four logos. You'll notice in my profile picture now that's in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, I've since then gotten into CNN, Wall Street Journal, Fast Company Magazine, and much, much more. That's because media success snowballs. You cannot buy your way into the Wall Street Journal and get written about there. But you have to first show them that you're someone that they can trust. That's what the media citation does. It's the bridge to the trust that leads to the real exposure in your business. Media success snowballs. You'll be the one getting picked up by magazines, getting put on TV and the radio. You'll have more media inquiries than you'll know what to do with once you do this. You'll be the one who has book deals coming to you. So it's guaranteed placement and to make this a complete done for you program, we'll also do all the photo shoots.